From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News Weekend Edition. Good evening and welcome to the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. I'm Katie Looper. Our top story tonight. The Fairbanks Police Department is urging people to stay away from the South Fairbanks area on Van Horn Road between Cushman and Easy Street. The agency issued a Nixle alert around 4 o'clock stating police activity would be occupying the area. Alaska State Troopers and Fairbanks Police were still on the scene around an hour later. As we receive more information, we will keep you updated on WebCenter11.com. The Citizens Budget Review Committee came together to finalize a report to the Fairbanks Board of Education regarding what they want to see for the next school year's fiscal school budget. Reporter Ryan Grimes has the story. Many members of the Citizens Budget Review Committee acknowledged yet another tough budgeting year for the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District last night. We're looking at a projected loss of possibly 13 to 15 million dollars to the school district and some of the preliminary figures that the superintendent had put forward was that we could be looking at a hundred people being eliminated, our FTEs, full-time employee positions being eliminated from the school district. The committee is made of community volunteers who review the school budget and make recommendations to the school board. While a finalized budget is not out yet, the committee is making an opinion report based on changes they want the school administration to focus on when the budget does become available. Chief Financial Officer Lisa Pierce says the committee wants the district to focus on reducing class sizes or at least prevent an increase of class sizes for schools in the borough. All of that input is being is being gathered up before the proposed budget is put in so that that product can be um, a well thought out and hopefully a, a well rounded presentation as we start as we start our official budgeting document. The committee as a whole will present the report to the school board at a Tuesday night special session meeting. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. The city of Fairbanks will investigate the cause of multiple motor vehicle accidents on Phillipsfield Road in the upcoming weeks. One council member says a construction error by the Department of Transportation is a possible cause for a reported 19 accidents in the past two weeks. Council member David Prue says City Mayor John Eberhardt, City Engineer Bob Prestache, and the Alaska Railroad Company and DOT officials will be getting together to discuss the accidents. Phillips Field Road was reconstructed by, a DOT, by DOT a few years ago. However, Alaska Railroad employees pointed out a particular rut out of the western side of the road that is allegedly causing the accidents. Cruz says his contact with Alaska Railroad officials revealed that DOT crews possibly changed the construction plans for Phillips Field Road at the last minute to save money. He adds that the main focus of these discussions will be to implement solutions that prevent more accidents from happening. And start looking at both the short-term solution, which is keeping the, as much ice off there as possible and keeping gravel on it, not sand, but gravel. The first thing is keep it safe, keep it as accident-free as possible. Then this summer or the next summer at the latest, redesign it, rebuild it. DOT, this is your issue. You got to do this. Just acknowledge it and let's be done with it and get through it. Ever wonder what it's like to be a veterinarian? Well, this afternoon, the public got to find out at UAS Veterinary Medicine Open House. This is the first veterinary program offered at the University of Alaska, and today they wanted the community to come check out their new facility. They gave out tours and introduced the public to their first class of 10 students. During the tour, kids could stop at hands-on hands -on stations to test their own surgery skills and watch stuffed animals be sutured. The idea for this program started back in 2009. A few years after that, they started hiring faculty and developing a curriculum. They got their first class of students in August of this year. And so today, they wanted to showcase their students their brand new facility at the UAF Murray Building and their program in general. But this has been so much fun because these kids, their eyes are just popping out of their head and they're, you know, they're really enthusiastic about it. And I mean, that's what this program is for. This program is for students. Um, so we're the very first class of veterinary medicine here. Um, a lot of people don't even know about it. So we just wanted to welcome the community, you know, people to bring their kids, um, maybe, you know, do all the stations. Um, just to let people know that this is here and that we are vet med. You know, we're here to stay and just welcome. <laughs> we were talking and it helps you 
learn more about the program itself and what the students are learning, what the students are doing in it. And um, yeah, it just really helped prepare me for what I'm looking at. It's really, I really wanted to just come in and see the, see the whole works and the students and talk to the doctors and uh, just see what was going on. When we come back, we take a look into another one of the 21 agencies that make up the United Way of the Tanana Valley. Also, today was the 50th annual ski swap, and locals gathered to sell their new or used snow gear. Those stories and more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. Last month, the American Cancer Society revised its mammogram guidelines, advising most women to start getting their routine screening at age 45. The recommendations include a long list of guidelines for women of different ages with varying risks of breast cancer and leaves many questions unanswered. Currently, six different groups in the U.S. recommend women starting start getting mammograms at three different ages. To help clear up the confusion, Dr. Jed Milan from Fairbanks North Star Radiology will be giving a talk on November 17th at the Breast Cancer Detection Center titled Making Sense of Current Screening Mammography Recommendations. The talk starts at 6 p.m. and will be free to the public. The American Cancer Society wanted to address that. Are we actually calling things cancer that technically weren't cancer. So we were not actually missing cancer and it wasn't based on that, it was that they thought maybe we were calling too many things that weren't and bringing women back in for additional studies more frequently than they needed to be. This morning, local skiers and snowboarders swapped gear at the 50th annual ski swap. Skiers and snowboarders started lining up early for first pick. People drop off items the night before or morning of, then receive a credit for whatever they bring in. After that, they can shop around and try things on at the Pioneer Park Civic Center. Ski swaps are great for recycling old gear that you've gro just grown out of or are tired of. Instead of throwing it out, people can sell their new or used winter sport gear, including skis, snowboards, boots, poles, helmets, ice skates, accessories, and clothing. It also makes things more affordable. Shoppers can buy gear for less than what they pay for at a store. This is the 50th year the Fairbanks Ski Patrol and Fairbanks Alpine Sports Club hosted this fundraising event. The proceeds help support the local volunteer patrol groups. There's usually 100 people or more lined up outside and they all come charging in here and find gear to buy and it's a little bit of a zoo for a little while but people get some good deals and they're mostly happy and um, works out for them and for us as well. So yeah my wife and I downhill ski a lot and we're just getting the kids into it and this is a good a good chance to get them some uh, cheap equipment to start with. You know he skied a couple times but he doesn't have his own gear yet so it's just a great chance to see um, you know get some secondhand gear and uh, you can always bring in your old gear and drop it off and it's just a good way to recycle that equipment. You know with the kids especially growing They'll outgrow this stuff in a year or two, and so we'll be back dropping this off and get some more next time. So, It's time once again for another installment of our focus on the 21 agencies of the United Way. Tonight, the spotlight is on Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Here's Mike Schultz. Big Brothers, Big Sisters strengthens the community by providing mentors to all children who need and want a caring adult role model. The driving force behind Big Brothers Big Sisters in Fairbanks and for Alaska in general is Tabor Rebaum. I asked Tabor what impact the United Way has in helping Big Brothers and Big Sisters operate. Well, the great thing about receiving United Way contributions is this is money that we can apply wherever the need is. This is uh, money that helps us keep the lights on and the rent paid in between the fundraisers and the, and the big grants. And one of the most meaningful things about receiving United Way contributions is contributions from our friends and people in the community. It, it represents community support. With her involvement with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, what does Tabor feel gives her the most fulfillment in her job? That's hard because there's so many aspects. What Big Brothers Big Sisters does is match kids who can benefit from additional attention with volunteers that help them develop in a way that will help them succeed in school and avoid delinquency, avoid substance abuse. The thing that really fulfills is the fact that we're working with parents and teachers 
who want something better for the kids that they have and they're dealing with. And we're working with volunteers who want to make a difference and are having fun while they're making a difference. Finally, what makes her most proud of Big Brothers and Big Sisters? I think the proudest moment are the little moments. When I'm in Fred Meyer or on the street and a, a person comes running up to me and thanks me for participating in the program. When a grandmother comes and tells me how wonderfully her granddaughter is doing because of the impact her big sister had on her. Those are the times that I'm so proud to be associated with this program and the wonderful staff that helps make it happen and the volunteers who are truly changing lives every single day. The United Way campaign continues until early next year. But remember, all donations stay within the community. Mike Schultz reports. Mike Fussell's coming up next with all your local sports action. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Interior Alaska. Mike Fussell here with your latest local sports action. It was another big weekend for both athletes here and on the road. Wrestlers who made it to the finals of the Hutch Meltdown had just one more match to win before becoming champions for the day. Local grapplers from Isleson, Lathrop, West Valley, North Pole, and Hutch all duked it out. We got a chance to catch some of the lower weight championship bouts. Lathrop's Mika E bested West Valley's William Gottmeyer by fall in the second period at the 106 pound weight class. Another Malmute, Caden Ott, won by decision over Allison's Jonathan St. Andre. That was at the top of the 113 pound bracket. North Pole's Maddie Knott got a quick pin in her championship matchup against Galena's Alina. Jacob in the girls 126 pound bout and Wesley Bockert of Lathrop Edge Raven Caleb Dunlap for the win. For full tournament results check backs next week during the weekend recap with Joe Cook. And high school volleyball players were in action today as well. It was all part of the ASAA state championships. The Monroe Catholic Rams were the lone interior team left in the tournament today. West Valley was knocked out on Friday in a sweep against East Anchorage. Monroe, though, in, a, in the 3A division, brought all they had to the court for a 3-2 victory in the Conce Finals. That pushed them to the title game against Valdez. The Rams would take the first set by a very close margin at 26 to 24. After that, they would lose some steam and go down three sets in a row. Two of those sets were at 25 into 18 points in the final, just a bit closer at 25 to 20. Valdez takes the title and the Hawks finish as state runner-ups. And it came down to the final minutes in an Ice Dogs Friday night matchup against the Janesville Jets. Through two periods, Fairbanks had edged Janesville with a score of 3-1. to one. Reggie Lutz, Logan Coombs, and Ryan Kiro all made that possible. But the Jets came flying back, finding the net twice in the middle of the third period. That brought the score to a tie at three points with just about three minutes left in the game. Janesville would find quick advantage on a power play, and the Jets' Andrew Roy would score the striking blow, dealing a heartbreaking loss to Fairbanks. Four to three. You know, we came in the locker room and, uh, you know, we kind of said, like, we just got to leave it all out there, you know, hope for the best. You know, we finally got some bounces off working hard and, you know, it paid off. You know, they're a great team. You know, they got some good systems, some good players, and, you know, playing in this building, it's really tough. You know, I think that fires us up, and, you know, you know, we get up for the big games. You know, we, uh, we get excited for them and we come to play. The Alaska Nanook hockey team is out of town, but they're not on vacation. They're actually doing quite a bit of work. The team took on Bemidji State at, Stanford, at the Stanford Center last night. Both squads plucked back and forth goals after two periods, leaving the score tied at three going into the final intermission. At that point, Brandon Morley accounted for all Nook scoring. He gained a hat trick on the night and helped position Alaska for a game-winning goal. Junior Josh Erickson would get that, propelling the Nooks to the win 4-3. And with that, UAF grabs its first win of the two-week road trip. The team will see Ferris State next Friday. And the Alaska men's basketball team opened the GNAC Pac West crossover hot last night. By the end of the first half alone, UAF would be up by 13 points over Hawaii Pacific, and they would keep the spring in their step, finishing out the game with a double-digit lead, 96-77. Damaging three-point shooting at around 64% from the outside of the arc helped push Alaska ahead of the Sharks. 15 HPU turnovers made it difficult for the island team to adjust to UAF's cold defense. Travante Williams grabbed the game-high honors with 22 points, and four other Nooks scored double figures as well.
And the Lady Nanooks basketball team got their season rolling in a home opener against Stanislaus State last night. Here's a look at the action from the Patty Center. Effort struck an almost even core through the first half of play with SSU up by only three points going into the break. The Nanooks would start to gain some momentum in the third thanks to Jordan Wilson who was on her game and racked up a game high of 22 points. Jaylee Mays would also provide a solid defensive hustle. The game would balance out again, but this time just before the final whistle, sending it all into a five minute overtime. Stanislavs walks off the court though, five points over the Nooks, dealing them a tough loss, 102 to 97. All right, and that about brings us to the buzzer for sports tonight. Katie Looper has your full weather forecast coming up next. Thanks for checking in and we'll see you next weekend. Welcome back to our Saturday edition. So we've got some really cold temperatures to report on tonight, but we'll start with our almanac for today. We had a recent high of 11 degrees, recent low of 6 below zero. Record high got up to 45 just two years ago in 2013. Record low 41 below zero, quite the opposite in 1956. Sun rose at 924 this morning, sunset 348 this afternoon. Our daylight has gone down to 6 hours and 31 minutes altogether, giving us a loss of 7 minutes from yesterday. Now around the state today, rain showers, snow showers in Juneau and Ketchikan, temperatures in the mid-30s. Anchorage is a little bit colder at 14, partly sunny skies at Kodiak at 25. As we look over to our east side of the state, around Nome, it's partly sunny skies, 7 degrees. 7 below up there in Barrow with cloudy skies for them, and the Fairbanks interior region about 1 below 0. All right, for our lower 48 weather, rain showers in Seattle at 47, same with Las Vegas, Phoenix region, and Dallas as well at 65 degrees. Partly sunny skies in New Orleans at 67, rain showers in Miami at 79 degrees, yet in New York, partly sunny skies around 50 degrees. For next week, it's going to be cold on our west side of the state, snow over Arizona, New Mexico area, heavy thunderstorms in the Texas region and Midwest, along with showers, and on our east side, uh, we can see milder weather for them and up there in New York flurries are expected. Now back in Alaska in the northern slope scattered snow showers for Barrow cloudy in Fort Yukon and Nome temperatures just below zero for Barrow in Fort Yukon and 13 degrees in Nome. And in the interior, partly cloudy in Healy, isolated snow showers for Fairbanks and Delta about 10 below in Fairbanks area and three above in Healy. And on our east side of the state, snow showers in Juneau and rain and snow for Ketchikan, temperatures in the mid-30s. On our west side of the state, we can see rain and snow at Colt Bay, cloudy skies in Bethel, mostly sunny for Kodiak, and temperatures in the mid-30s for Colt Bay and Kodiak, and about 18 for Bethel. And for our south central region, sunny for Valdez and Anchorage and cloudy skies in Homer, and temperatures around 15 for Anchorage and Homer, and about 20 in Valdez. All right, those cold temperatures I'm talking about, 21 below, cloudy with cold, cloudy and cold with scattered snow showers for tonight. And it doesn't look like it's getting much better tomorrow, 10 below, continued cloudy with scattered snow showers. Lastly, for extended outlook, pretty much negative temperatures all week, ranging from 14 below to about 5 below till Wednesday. But it looks like we might have some temperatures warming up for Thursday, about 15, and then 20 below to about 15 below for a nightly temperature, so make sure to, to warm up your cars and bundle up. All right, that's all we have time for, and that's going to wrap up this Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We're glad you could join us. Join us here six days a week at 6 and 11, or online anytime at webcenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, have a good night.